started now. So this next session is on uh, charge transport in different organic photovoltaic materials. I'm uh, Ross McKenzie. I'm from uh, uh, University of Queensland. Uh, and I just want to shamelessly plug that I have a blog. <laughs> and the reason I mention that is that there's many posts on that that address questions in this workshop. And particularly, um, there's a lot of misunderstanding, but people need to realise in this community, for example, the importance of Marcus Hush trans charge transfer theories. Um, and that was one of the questions that Jeff asked in the last session. But anyway, there's a lot of posts about that. So, um, one thing too, because this is an I2CAM workshop, it's meant to follow the Frauenfelder rules. And that is that basically one third of the time should be devoted to questions and discussion. So that means for these, so the speakers need to take note about this, they were warned whether they read the email or not, it's another thing. But they have 30 minutes, and then there's going to be 15 minutes for questions and discussion. And uh, <coughs> so um, be thinking of lots of good questions. I mean, they don't have to necessarily be exactly on um, the topic of the talk, but something to do with charge transfer. And just so you know who Hans Fraunfelder is, a uh, uh, founding member of I I ICAM, and also is really, the, I think, the doyen of, of biological physics. And I didn't realise when I looked on the web that he's actually now 88. So, uh, but still. And so, if you're stuck for questions, these are my questions, okay? And some of you have probably got similar ones, okay? So hopefully some of the speakers will address them, and certainly in discussion time we can address them. So, um, question, what is the mechanism of charge transport? What's the origin of the observed electric field dependent mobility in a lot of these materials? What determines the relative magnitude of electron and hole mobilities? How does mobility depend on intermolecular separation and relative orientation? And I think thermal power measurements would be very helpful to determine the charge transport mechanism. So, um, the first speaker is uh, uh, Vladimir um, Dikonov. He's going to talk about charge transfer states and oxygen-induced degradation in pol polymer solar cells. much for the introduction and of course I would like to thank the, you guys for inviting me here and excellent scenery. I just came from uh, just from from from, from Jutsburg and but I use already this uh, water bus uh, so it was already a good start uh, and I enjoyed it very much and uh, <coughs> actually um, uh, Sean wrote me uh, actually I, I'm, I'm allowed to to, to speak about everything <laughs> I'm now uh, busy with and interested in. That's why uh, I decided to combine, actually, uh, or divide my talk into two subjects, actually, which are not no, neither published nor <laughs> not written yet. So it's a kind of things, work in progress, if you like. And uh, the one that we are talking about, charge transfer stays in the polymer and polymer fullerene glands. On the other hand, we are uh, um, working on a mechanism of oxygen uh, degradation or photo degradation in this kind of system. And they too, from my point of view, fit very well into this title of this workshop, a complex interaction. So it's really so complex uh, that it's hard to uh, understand them. And uh, let's say, uh, I'm, look, I'm open for discussion and uh, interesting uh, contribution and ideas maybe. Well, to confuse you a little bit, I just to change the, the order of, uh, of this. I start with the uh, oxygen and uh, degradation, maybe just to <coughs> not to lose the, the, uh, the focus. Uh, we're very interested in devices, of course, and a long stable uh, organic photovoltaic cell. And then I will turn to switch to uh, charge transfer states. And uh, well, what we're looking at uh, the typical devices, 
we produce now we have uh, in the region of four to four and a half percent. So the degradation studies I will uh, explain today or show you today. But they are made on, on this kind of uh, solar cell with an optimized parameter with the uh, current in the range of 12, 14 million per square centimeter and efficiency in this case. It's, uh, it's, it's corrected for spectral mismatch. If you want to do it, you get it first around so six. So it's quite a reasonable solar cell. Um, don't be irritated. This is a um, special piece for HD, not from, not, from not from Aldrich or not from Ricketts. It's from BASF. Um, and uh, the ratio also written here. Well, uh, many things are optimized, but not, as you see here, not everything is under control. And uh, this is what was uh, displayed by this blue line here. We see a field dependence of the photocurrent um, in the fourth and third quadrant, which implies probably um, that in the device we have this intermediate uh, uh, states, Coulomb bound polaron pairs or Coulomb bound charge transfer states. So, this is actually the a very important difference uh, from inorganic semiconductors where you have uh, free charge carriers on one side and exciton on the other side. The, here it seems that this intermediate state play a particular role, a very important role, because they may dissociate but they also may recombine. And the interplay between these two processes actually determine uh, um, the performance of the device. Well, I start with the uh, for the first uh, oxygen in uh, we actually perform, try to, uh, uh, to perform two uh, well-defined experiments on the solar cell, uh, treat them uh, with oxygen or to study the influence of oxygen only. Um, we do that uh, by using synthetic air. This is actually a mixture of 20% uh, oxygen, 80% nitrogen and uh, content of water. It's less than 1 ppm. Uh, one just in the dark, in the, in, the, in the second type of experiments, and dark under illumination. So we keep, we, we subject uh, um, the devices to oxygen, it's always in the same conditions in the chamber, filled with the dry, uh, with synthetic air, and once in the dark for a certain amount of hours, uh, and then uh, under illumination with white light. So it's not just actually resolved a uh, certain way of uh, just a white LED, high power LED. Uh, oh, sorry. What you see here actually in the dark, uh, first uh, you, you see the solar cell parameter J, J curves. Uh, you see the time scale from zero, uh, pristine to 120 hours. Uh, it's quite a long time scale and you see basically the three main parameters. Uh, open circuit voltage, blue, uh, short circuit current red, uh, field factor green and the resulting PCA power, power conversion efficiency shown here. As you see here, just if you if you if you don't have light, just dark, on the time scale of let's say several tens or even hundred hours, you get the dramatic decrease by 60 percent due to GSC. So the power conversion efficiency in this case is determined uh, well, degree degradation of the cell in the dark. Uh, <coughs> due to GSC. Well, if you uh, shine light on it and do the same uh, experiment again, you uh, see that uh, all parameters, uh, GSC, VOC, and the field factor gradually decrease, but on a, at a much faster scale. So it's, uh, here now we are talking about minutes, uh, not hours like in the previous case. So you see the photo, uh, photo degradation oxygen plus light uh, change uh, the, uh, the, uh, the performance much faster. Well, now GSC, VOC, the, how, to, uh, how to understand this behavior. So actually, uh, this parameter uh, close a uh, very complex function of charge carrier density, charge carrier mobility, and both of them are influenced by traps. So we start to maybe to try to address these three issues individually. I start with the trap uh, density. Shown here is the trap density, uh, kind of DO, the, uh, density of occupied states, 
uh, as a function of activation energy uh, uh, for P3HT for pure polymer red and blue uh, P3HT PCB and black. How we derive this uh, density of state by measuring thermally stimulated current. So uh, the technique is uh, very no well known here, I, I, I assume, and maybe some of you will uh, also talk about this. So you, what you do actually, you fill the gap, fill the traps by shining uh, white light on your device and cooling down uh, your device. When you stroke it, let's say very low temperature, let's say 10K or 15K, you connect your device to a very sensitive uh, sub uh, pico amperometer uh, uh, and uh, just uh, warm up. So you have a kind of T start, T stop uh, method. Uh, and, and by selecting, by choosing this T start and T stop, you, you can do a kind of fractional uh, uh, anal analysis of, of the charges coming out of your device just due to built in film. So there's no applied voltage, nothing. Just they come due to built in film. And it, by changing this T start and T stop, you can actually uh, uh, do it so like with fractions and activation energy. And you see a clear difference. So, first of all, of course, it's a, a, the, the, the overall trap density for blends is much higher. Uh, but also the width of the distribution, so which is probably due to a uh, strong disorder in a blend, as in a pure P3HD, uh, we distinguish three different traps, T1, T2, and T3. Uh, T3 is a shallow in here, T1 and the, uh, around 50 milli electron volts. Maximum are, is in both cases, so which is probably related to a defect state in a P3HD, around 100, 105 milli electron volt. Uh, the trap density, overall density by adding actually all this uh, uh, all this uh, rectangle and this histogram, you will get the trap density of around 10 to the 22 uh, 10 to the 23 per cubic meter, uh, much higher. Uh, well, let's see, but this is a time zero, so it's a, just a fresh device. Let's see what's going on if you, sh uh, if, you uh, if you perform degradation, if you try to, to, uh, to do a degradation. Just in the dark, you see there's a one, it is C curve, with, uh, and you see here, and, uh, and again, in a time scale of hundreds of hours, you get a decrease, uh, <coughs> a slightly decrease of this main peak, uh, uh, 105 million electron volt, as I mentioned to you, but at the same time, you have a slight increase of this shoulder, so from the deeper traps, but if you see uh, all of the overall, overall trap density, it's more or less constant. It's quite different to what we observed in the piece of pure piece of HD because there, uh, after 50, uh, 50 hours of, of, of degradation, we have saw already that the threat density increased by two and a half times. Well, so that's about, uh, excuse me, that's about um, uh, threat density, uh, just concerning the uh, photo degradation. Similar behavior, but just much faster. So the photo degradation in in all these cases, just do the same job, but much, much faster. Let's uh, have a look at the mobility. For this, we apply this <coughs> a very famous uh, uh, and useful techniques. Uh, sell it in this case. Sell it, not for to sell it. And you see this characteristic uh, peak, uh, isometric peak in particular <coughs> to, the, <coughs> to the pulse. We use 50 microseconds, and I think details of this technique will be given in the, in the talks. Uh, after, after this one, uh, this, the idea is just to extract charge carriers uh, out of devices by applying a ramp of certain weights. And uh, what you can see here, actually, is that the, from the, uh, the T-max, you can estimate the mobility of the charge carriers. And you see the mobility gradually slightly decreases, but not very much, just to, just to very small degrees here, uh, much, much weaker than in the pure p 3 HD. So it's already for the second time it's a kind of a stabilization effect of due to full rents. And uh, it's actually good news. Uh, what about uh, charge carrier concentration? Because the area under the curve, the, under the cell curve, because you measure a transient, it's a current as a function of time, and the current, 
current time style is the charge, charge density. So by integrating uh, this area under, under this peak, uh, subtracting geometrical capacitance, of course, you will get the charge carrier density which is shown on your right hand side. And you see it's an increase, in particular in the longer time, uh, uh, near the factor of two. So we have an increase of charge carrier density and uh, due to oxygen in the dark, but also, of course, in the, uh, in the, uh, the illumination, which is assigned, logically assigned, to uh, um, the formation of holes, just uh, oxygen induced topic. Well, let's summarize this uh, fact, experimental facts of three experiments, maybe it's, uh, it's not valid, but uh, just to summarize them. So we see in the dark, uh, the short circuit current, <coughs> only the short circuit current goes down. When you shine light on it and apply synthetic air, oxygen, all three parameters go down. Trap density remains more or less the same, but the deeper trap just increases a little bit. Mobility gradually decreases, charge carrier concentration goes up. Well, and uh, I emphasize the, the results uh, in dark and photo degradation are more or less the same, just on a minute scale, not hour scale. How to understand it? Uh, can we understand the influence of uh, charge carrier um, or topping uh, on, the, on the main parameter of solar cell? For this, we performed uh, macroscopic simulation by solving a system of Poisson. Uh, two drift and diffusion equations for electron holes and, uh, of course, uh, continuity equation. Well, we assumed the bimolecular recombination in, uh, of larger R type, so depending on the mobility, but at this stage we didn't consider, and uh, I would like to just mention it, we didn't consider the uh, Coulomb bound uh, polaron pairs, so the excitons are split directly into free charge carriers. So it's an assumption. Uh, the parameter of uh, simulation are shown here, so we use a kind of effective medium, so polymer fuller and blends at this uh, band gap 1.3 with this uh, effective electric constant, and, and the rest is also self explained Well, if you look at the uh, ID curves just obtained by solving this a question, uh, the system of uh, equations, and as a function of whole doping. So you see actually a uh, very uh, similar curve. We saw, we saw this curve in the beginning of my talk, actually a decrease of the short circuit current. Uh, the same. So it seems that uh, adding additional charges into the system, uh, we have a kind of uh, redistribution of electric field. So we, we have uh, reduced bending, or well, it's a possible explanation, so we have uh, uh, less band bending, so if we have less band bending, we have a less driving force uh, uh, and uh, uh, reduced electric field uh, driving the charge carriers to the context. This means that the recombination may, may become more pronounced, and if so, we will get a smaller shots of the car, which is actually absurd. Well, what about mobility? So if you vary mobility in, uh, let's say, in this, in this range, two orders of magnitude, 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 6, you actually also observe um, a decrease of uh, uh, short circuit current, also field factor, but uh, in contrast to what we have observed here, we have a slight decrease of VOC, which is not yet uh, understood, understood in, in all details, but the possible explanation will always say if your mobility goes down, well, it, uh, decreased mobility would lower uh, Langevin recombination. If so, you will get uh, a higher charge carrier density. Higher charge carrier density would mean so that the distance between quasi thermal levels will be a little bit bigger, so increasing the VOC. But this is um, it's a art of working uh, scenario which is not, not yet uh, uh, confirmed in detail, so we don't know exactly yet today why the VOC goes up with the result. So I put a question mark. Just to summarize this part of the talk, well, we observe a decrease of GSC, which we assign to an to a, a oxygen doping. We, we also see that the effect is strongly accelerated just by shining light on the device. 
not only oxygen, and we see some kind of stabilization effect due to due to fullerene moiety in the blend. While the the degradation of PCBM is not taken into account here, so it probably was What is in Microscopic nature of this oxygen induced state actually. Well, for this we uh, turn to uh, to the technique which is also very uh, known here. I, I assume uh, technique allowing uh, for the determination of uh, probing the radicals or spin carrying particles. So if you have a charge transfer uh, exciton split in two particles and they are not strongly interacting. So you can uh, uh, detect them by using microwave absorption and using so-called electron spin resonance. So you have a spin one particle, so let's say electron holes, they have Zeeman splitting and they shine a light of a certain frequency which fits to the Zeeman splitting and you see a microwave absorption here. Let's turn to the pure polymer, for example, uh, like shown here in the, in the pristine PhD, you have a little uh, a small signal in a G factor 2. Uh, when you shine light on it, you will get green light, so the, you generate charges. And interestingly, when you evacuate, when you switch also light and pump your sample for a certain uh, time, you will uh, get the reduction of the signal if you do it longer and uh, heat a little bit, and so you can nearly come to the original state. So. We have a kind of formation of radicals, probably due to charge transfer reaction between polymer and, uh, uh, and the oxygen, but this reaction is partially reversible. This is not the case, uh, oh, this is quite known uh, uh, fact uh, for several polymers already. What is uh, interesting is uh, that the behavior of, of ESR, formation of radicals, and this formation of charge, uh, charge transfer states, and with uh, the quenching of photoluminescence due to, uh, due to, uh, due to doping, completely different. Well, shown here, uh, purple, uh, this is a e time uh, temporal evolution of ESR, of actually a maximum of this EPR curve, ESR curve, and the photoluminescence quenching. So that means up there is a small uh, quenched luminescence, or no luminescence, or little luminescence, and here is the pristine, so the quenching is zero in this case. So vacuum, so you have a fresh sample, pristine sample. When you apply air or synthetic air, you get very fast quenching of, of, of the photofluorescence and very gradual decrease <coughs> of this uh, EPR. And when you uh, apply vacuum, you see that nothing happened to the photoluminescence, and the photoluminescence seems to, to stay there, so it's an irreversible pr process. And you have a gradual decrease here. And uh, until well, you do it longer, you will probably not ar arrive at the original state, but very close to it. Well, what's going on in the photoluminescence? And the photoluminescence, of course, you have to probe the photoluminescence itself. And that's what we actually uh, do in the next experiment. So if you're interested in this photoluminescence, so this is uh, excited state, this is the ground state, you excite your sample, you have photofluorescence, it may decay. It may decay in different ways. One possible scenario is it decays in the triplet exciton. And uh, if you have a triplet, you have three levels instead of two, and you have two transition. And these two guys, these two shelters, actually the signature of triplet exciton. And we do observe this very strong triplet exciton here, as is shown in the pristine samples, with the very characteristic shelter, different uh, orientation relative uh, to uh, to, to outer magnetic field, but you see these three couple of lines, and even of different sign, this outer, this inner, and this. This is one triplet exciton having different orientation. But when you apply uh, air, synthetic air, you see that the only a narrow peak, which is from CT states, is here, but the triplet is completely quenched. When you uh, again try to uh, pump it, evacuate it, and heat a little bit, you see the triplet actually restored at least to a certain extent, not completely, particularly uh, this in the inner part, but restored. So you see that the photoluminescence quenching and this charge transfer exit on the, or the, the EPR signal of, of a completely different mechanism. We, we, we can distinguish between two uh, 
Well, for EPR, actually, or for photoluminescent quenching, we see an irreversible uh, interaction of basically or uh, triplet uh, state of, of, of uh, as we uh, established from holding our triplet state of, of polymer interacting with the triplet state of oxygen, resulting in a s oxygen in a singlet state, which is very reactive and uh, form uh, uh, come to a reaction with the poly polypeptide. And this is irreversible. Uh, in the case of CT states, you can actually form the charge transfer reaction, the, uh, the charge transfer between polymer and oxygen, but when you apply vacuum, so you have this bundle kind of them, uh, and you, uh, you, you quench it triplet, but this is irreversible. So actually, you, when you pump it, you will get uh, a signal decrease. Uh, interesting when you add this 60, this 60 complete with the oxygen, and, uh, and this is, is a kind of uh, actually uh, interrupt this process and basically. Uh, uh, leading to the, this one, not the one. So the, the, the again, this is PCBM can work as a stabilizer, even in a photo, photo oxidation reaction. But we summarize this part. Uh, as I mentioned, stabilization effect uh, due to PCBM, we have two degradation mechanisms, different degradation. One is a charge transfer state with partially reversible, and we have a photo oxidation due to photo uh, synthesized uh, singlet oxygen from the triplet oxygen, just creating, forming a triplet state on the pole. Now, I have a few uh, minutes and I will uh, turn to the next, uh, uh, second part, which is a little bit shorter, for the induced charge transfer state. So we are interested in this, uh, in this species, formed at the interface between polar and pole, uh, polar donor acceptor interface, uh, and occurred in charge transfer. Well, for this we apply the technique uh, which is uh, used uh, in every, uh, probably in every lab uh, doing uh, photovoltaic cells and estimating the quantum efficiency of this solar cell, in this case external quantum efficiency. So actually we are interested in the number of extracted electron holes there, so you measure current as a function of uh, wavelengths and the ratio of extracted electron to the, to the number of photons incident, not sort but incident is uh, denoted as an external quantum yield or IPCE, uh, incident photon conversion efficiency. Well, if you look at this, well, quite reasonable cell, 70% uh, and maximum quantum efficiency, external quantum efficiency is a function. And you see a little peak from PCBM. We have uh, um, this is the main peak, or peak coming from P3HT. But uh, Interesting, of course, if there are any states in a sub in a in a subband gap, so in a homolumo gap, so just expected uh, from the uh, from the charge transfer at the charge transfer interface. Almost no contribution here, but there is a contribution. It's just a matter of plotting this data. If you um, make it in a semi-log plot, you will clearly see this gull-shaped uh, shoulder here. So it do, does mean that in this range, let's say below 800 nanometers, something like, you get the photo generation current where the uh, no, neither polymer nor fuller absorbed. You can see it here. This is a solar cell, just devices made of uh, polymer and fuller and not uh, uh, optimized at all, and that's why I don't, uh, don't, don't uh, um, uh, there's probably different thicknesses, of course, but important this edge here. and, and by combining these two equi spectra from, from polymer and fullerene, we cannot combine the uh, constructor, uh, uh, the, uh, the PCB of uh, P3HT solar cell, in particular in a near infrared range. Well, so we are interested in this part. Where does it come from? So we attribute it to the formation of uh, uh, this charge transfer exciton. This is a kind of working scenario, but of course we should check if it is true. And uh, first, of course, uh, try and first check uh, uh, could be, uh, let's say, maybe it is a kind of up conversion or a two photon process. So you shine light, a red light or infrared, near infrared light in your device, and due to two photon process, you, you actually end up somewhere here and you generate such current. So this, we excite our samples uh, with red light uh, in the range of 
900 nanometers, but also in the green area. So I showed here actually the uh, external quantum efficiency intensity dependence. Well, it, we change the intensity. I apologize, this is this layer of German, but this is the light intensity. And this is a photocurrent at 500 nanometers and at, uh, and at 955 nanometers. So it's, it's in the main EQE and also in the, in the near infrared EQE part. And you see all of them are a different excitation, 500, 955. They are all linear, so we don't have two photon processes. It's all one photon process. We can exclude these nonlinear processes. Yeah. The second, uh, of course, we're interested, uh, maybe this, uh, you know, this uh, infrared part or near infrared part of this EQE spectrum has nothing in common with the, with the main part of EQE. So we apply electric, uh, uh, electric voltage or bias to this device to see what's going on here. And the reason for that actually is I already discussed uh, the field dependence of the uh, of the car of, of the of the ID, you see here this 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 line is not horizontal, but uh, but shows a field dependence, and uh, that's what exactly the idea um, uh, to check the different points of ID curves and different voltages of uh, uh, shown here uh, the uh, EQE, and you see a dependence here in the main EQE by changing voltage. 0.3 to minus 5 volt. Uh, the same, exactly the same uh, behavior was the same, same scale that was found also for the near infrared part. So it's, it was a kind of a quite interesting uh, uh, conclusion. So it seemed that the boss uh, electron, the whole pairs of in the near infrared range, but also in the visible range, they just pass through the same uh, dissociation group. So it seems that this charge transfer state, if this part coming from the charge transfer state, is a, um, is a really is a, is a, is a, is a, is a precursor to the photocarbon, uh, uh, also in the visible state. So the generated uh, electron health, uh, whole pairs pass through the same dissociation group. Uh, what is the impact on the solar cell? And this is actually the very last part. So, um, uh, Interesting, of course, this parameter influence of the CT states and open source voltage shows of the current. I just addressed uh, VOC, uh, VOC, you know, maximum of VOC you can get out of your cell is a band gap, so just a thermodynamic limit. It can be smaller because you subtract this according to uh, models by Koster and uh, some other uh, people. So you subtract the term which is logarithmically dependent on the charge carrier concentration. So if you want to get higher VOC, you need low recombination and you need a higher charge carrier density, N of P. But all of them are, of course, a function of morphology and uh, that's why we made several, uh, several uh, variations like uh, here, acceptor strengths, so we change the lumen level a little bit, we change the morphology, so we make pristine, uh, annealed, different concentration, and we use this five materials, basically, PPV, PCVHT, PCBMC60, this PCBMC60, and just the uh, normal PCBMC60, and uh, different weight ratio between PCVHT, PCBM, pristine annealed, so the color is here important, and the black uh, uh, points will be just the PPVs. With, uh, so the, see the uh, open circuit voltage in the y-axis is a function of the value of uh, external uh, quantum efficiency, and uh, we select this 135 electron volt as, as, as a measure uh, of curvature. So it's, uh, um, uh, and you see a kind of, just with this example, exception, you have a, a well, if not linear, but very, very clear dependence of, of open circuit voltage uh, on the, on the EQE, which is the value of, uh, of uh, external quantum yield in the near infrared. Well, with this, I summarize this part. So we have uh, seen that the exciton dissociates in the Coulomb bound electron hole pairs and forms this CT state. Well, it's quite, quite straightforward. There are different uh, independent, uh, independent experiments uh, showing that. But also, uh, we see that 
these city states can be directly excited, not in the second state directly excited by shining infrared light on your device. And secondly, we think that we have uh, the, whole, um, the, the electron hole pairs we generate in our cell. We pass through this city, city bottleneck, so to say, or to pass the city, city, uh, city states are precursor for electron holes. With this, I would like just to mention the people contributing uh, to this work, so the APR work, so the MR work, time results, I didn't mention it just for time reasons, but I mentioned it in the extended abstract time result PPR with also indication of polar nuclear charge transfer states. Uh, Michael Binder, uh, one, uh, and simulation were done by Alexander Wagenfly and Carsten Deibel. Uh, fundings uh, in Europe, uh, as you may heard, the organic photovoltaics um, is very popular in the funding. It's uh, fantastic, so we enjoy this situation at least in this uh, next uh, couple of years and uh, different priority programs, not only uh, in the German Research Council, but also the uh, research minister and of course in the European project. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. This is my group. Uh, you're welcome to visit us. Some of you are here already there. And uh, thank you for your attention. Charge carrier density 
just the lower limit of charge theory density available in the sun. For several reasons. Because they come out of traps, for example, if you have traps, they come out of traps, they can recombine, they are not there. But they are, you know, they should be participating. This N and P should be considered when you calculate the electric field distribution in a device solving for some equation. So they are there, they should be calculated. That's why, um, well, we are not that, uh, 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 but, but correct question. So, just on, so until when you say it differs by a factor of how much, we're doing a factor of two, a factor of 100, or? Yeah. I mean, just I, I, I can't give you an exact answer. I, I just got a feeling it's probably in two orders, in three orders. Four I, so I, I, if you do have measurements back, it can extract all the charges. I agree with you that photosolid may not be the ideal one. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's also the order charges. I, I, but it's probably a good discussion to have what is that number. Because they are a few and If, if uh, so the, the killing argument, and this is it's a matter of, to be discussed here actually. So if you say if this is the what exact number we get from from uh, from say 10 to the power of 22, it means that the Macroscopic simulation doesn't explain anything. That's the point. And I fully agree with you. So I hope that we are a little bit on this side to get it. <laughs> because the related, sorry, a related thing is the, the mobility there. You've got 10 to the minus 8 meters squared per volt second. Yeah. How does that compare to the mobility you measure from? Yeah, uh, this, uh, we, we, we tried, well, uh, it's not my work, it's a uh, PhD student. Well, they vary this value in a to both direction, and there is no very strong dependence on the mobility. So it is uh, it is lower. Uh, so it's a how much? Ten to the minus. It is higher. Excuse me. It's a meter square per volt per second. So it's a, it's, a, it's around ten to the minus four. Uh, no, ten to the minus two. So uh, but you can you can make it ten to the minus nine. So it's Okay. Okay. Sorry. Not too many after all. Matter of fact, I just wanted to remark that these numbers are very similar to what uh, to what you get if you do the PEANS uh, measurements on exactly the same system as a function of oxygen exposure. They go from yeah, 10 to the 22 to 10 to the 24 in a few hours. That sort of thing. Very similar sort of numbers. Thank you. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just the energy of charge transfer this thing. I mean, um, Formation of uh, city states increase with the electric constant. Yeah. And what? So if you do increase the amount of dielectric screening, that right. affects, like, right. for example, driving a dielectric constant one of the problems. Mm -hmm. What do we predict happens to that? Well, first of all, we need to probably quite a few things. Mean that, that, that means that dissociation becomes easier. Right. That means that you, uh, you actually, it's the, uh, you, you got a run from where you want to go. That's, that's exactly one of the uh, uh, points, uh, not very clear also. Well, we have an idea, we, we made a, a suggestion to this because you imagine you have a hundred milli, uh, you have you have not a hundred nanometer uh, active layer and you have work function difference, let's say one volt. So we have 10, 10, 10 to the 7 volt per meter or something, yeah? So it's, but, but if you just calculate the dissociation probability, um, you will never get 70% uh, AQE, external quantum yield. And so you actually don't know um, why the Coulomb-bound electron hole pairs are dissociated so easily and so efficiently into, into free charge carriers under this, uh, uh, let's say, operating condition, under this building voltage. So the possible explanation uh, could be, so
So you have a you have a delocalization, you have a conjugation length effect, and so you have a the longer the segments, the, the more delocalized, the more easier is this hop from Coulomb bound to the Maybe this is also due to this screening you mentioned, right? But yeah. I think you also find something like this. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Yep. It was in fact, Paul Bloom published that. He showed a series of polymers, bivector constant from about P5 to 4, and showed enhanced dissociation. So that's in the literature. Yeah. You should see that question. How do you run to measure the dissociation just in quantum field? So that was in inorganic stem cell, I think. No, 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 it's called on the cell, so it's uh, in this yeah. game. Yeah. So, can you get it on yeah. the church? Uh, what is the last yes. one question? Yeah. Very interesting uh, results when you show the nucleus um, function of the latent group. Have you measured the function of the latent That's it, actually. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's, 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 it's my idea which is eight years old, but I, I don't know how to do that, how to measure exactly equi like putting the sample in a cryostat. So you have actually you can put samples in a cryostat and then you have a problem with optic. But uh, I hope somebody. Okay. <laughs> no, we did. Yep, okay, we'll wait for you. Okay. Same